Hello world, it's Dave again. Come for another update. My friend. Ha ha. Um gonna do another culture shock thing here. Um the one that what I want to entitle this one is the good stuff. And I know that when one day, as I say, in the distant future, somebody might comment on this, I'll probably get a lot of flack for this because a lot of what I'm going to describe as the good stuff is probably things that um people of a healthier might healthier mindset might think is kind of negative but if you enjoy a party occasionally now and again as i i do then uh, you might agree with me that these are very very good things to enjoy while you're here so i got a few notes a uh, few things i'm going to talk about which are fantastic so uh let's put it this way if you've come over here then uh and you're a smoker you're in the smoking mecca just to give you a little bit of history um, one of the biggest tobacco companies in Japan is owned or part owned by the government. This should give you some kind of idea of the backing uh, behind uh, why it's so popular. So that's kind of like round one, why, why this is the case that smoking is so popular in the first place. Um, second to this is the cost of cigarettes. Now, if you come from socialist uh socialist mecca canada then you get like taxed out the gang when you live at home and if you're going to pay for cigarettes you got to pay something like 10 bucks a pack i don't know even at your cheapest swill that you're going to buy you're going to pay something like i don't know nine bucks even at the cheapest crap that you can possibly buy and here it doesn't matter imported their finest quality you're going to be able to get a pack of cigarettes here for like four bucks so culture shock wow i was like if i want to kill myself never is it being so cheap wow that's excellent um but if you if you're going out to a party or something like that maybe you want to you know i don't know have a little fun break with uh, all this you know trying to live healthy then hey cheap ciggies that's fantastic um also the availability of cigarettes um it's it's common knowledge you know japanese have everything in vending machines um, and so that's also included. You got cigarettes and vending machines all over the place. The only way that it's been made more difficult is that if you go to a 7-Eleven, you have to buy this little card that you use at the machine if you're of age to use them because you can imagine they had an issue with underage smoking before because you could just go to a vending machine and buy cigarettes. There was nothing to prevent people, um, which I think is good. Although they've run into continued problems with this because now sometimes they'll put one of these card machines to use the vending machine next to the vending machine, which is hilarious. There's prevention for you. Um, so there's that. If you want to get cheap cigarettes, hallelujah, you've got an opportunity here. Um, something else that you uh, you have as an option here. Now, when you, when you want to buy booze, if you like having the occasional drink, one, two, three, four, however many you, you might enjoy, um, like I do, I enjoy drinking time to time with some friends or alone when I'm down and eating fried chicken. But don't tell anyone that. Um, booze here. So beer is comparatively expensive. Uh, you're going to pay the same amount, uh, say like 12 bucks for a six pack or something like that. Or you can buy cheaper stuff uh, for quite inexpensive here. But where you really win, where you really win is their hard alcohol. Hard alcohol in Japan, maybe it's because there's a lower level of tolerance for alcohol here. Lower body weight, people get drunk or easier. Excuse me. Um, so they uh, they just price it way lower. So if you grab something like I enjoy a nice old fashioned made popular by Mad Men. Um, if you enjoy a nice old fashioned and you want to get some decent bourbon, maybe not the best, but decent, um, you get Maker's Mark. And back home in Canada, we call it like a two six. That's like 26 ounces roughly. You buy that for something like $50 back home. It's incredibly expensive in Canada. So maybe different in the U.S. But here, you can get the same thing for like 20 bucks, almost, you know, call it like less than half price that you can buy here. And they've got, I've never seen this before, they've got 1.75 liter containers of whiskey <laughs> that you can buy in, uh, they're kind of equivalent to, to Walmart, it's called Mega Donkey. How fantastic is that? Um, you can buy 1.75 liters of whiskey for 20 bucks. And that, to me, is almost getting damn near irresponsible because if you didn't have a problem with alco alcoholics before, you will now. 
Um, but I've, I've stayed away from the liters and liters of whiskey. Um, so incredibly inexpensive, hard alcohol. If your goal is to drink, then, well, you've found a home finally in Japan. Um, now, aside from this, something to extend on the idea of drinking. Um, a phrase you should familiarize yourself with if you come here, which is nomi hodai. And I've never heard of nomi hodai. Nomi hodai is amazing. Nomi hodai is the act of unlimited drinking when you go into a restaurant. And this unlimited drinking costs you 20 bucks. So, you know, when you thought that your meal was going to be expensive before, say goodbye to that. You want to have a couple drinks, you just pay into this, and then it's unlimited cocktails and beer for $20. This is unheard of in Canada. I don't even think it's legal. Or if people are doing it, you know, it would be like not announced very loudly. So that's amazing. I've grown to love Nomi Hodai. Uh, an amazing thing to save a few dollars and enjoy a few drinks. So there's a great culture shock for you. Um, moving along, probably make this like the uh, the final little thing. Maybe this becomes a separate series, culture shock, good stuff. Um, is the act of tipping. Now, the act of tipping, I know in the U.S. is it's very important, and in Canada it's very important as well, but I've seen it in the last couple of years kind of like spin out of control, where it used to be, you know, you pay 10%, and if you got excellent service, then in some cases you might tip someone 15%. And I've worked in the restaurant industry, you know, so um, I understand the need for it. People have a relatively low minimum wage, but it's gotten out of control, you know, to the point where everybody's expecting something like 20% or above, and then you go and spend very little money, and for somebody who's just occasionally trying to eat out, but, you know, save a few bucks, at the same time, that becomes very difficult. You're going to pay an arm and a leg with that tipping system. Here in Japan, they have a slightly different system. It's called no tipping. Amazing. I love this. And philosophically, I think it's kind of a good idea if you pay your staff enough. Because really, when you go into a restaurant, you would expect someone, when they're doing their job, to do it to the best of their ability, you wouldn't then expect that service would change or that the cost would change depending on the amount or quality of service that you've got. Um, and I know that, again, people might go into an uproar because of this. I don't think tipping is horrible, but I've seen here that it works perfectly fine. I don't think anybody's dying as a result of not having it. And it certainly helps my, uh, my checkbook. You know, I'm doing a lot better. So a culture where you don't tip, I've discovered, is... Not so bad, not so bad at all. Um, so something I really, really enjoy. So you're going out, you got unlimited drinks for 20 bucks. You're not going to have to tip at the end of the thing. People talk about Japan as though it were this incredibly expensive place to live in. Not so, my friend. It just depends on where you are and how you spend, like so many places in the world. You know, I've, I've really discovered that coming from Vancouver, it's the most expensive place in the world. Really, honestly, um, not so much Japan. So that's it. There's a, there's a couple of cool things um, that you should know if you come over here. Definitely know me, Hoda. you got to know that. Um, but as I say, I'll always uh, give you a, a song or something at the end of this. You've made it to the end of the video, and for that I'm incredibly grateful. Um, and the word we're going to use today is really, really useful. And it's kind of the equivalent of saying, like, is that okay? Or I'm okay. And it's daijoubu. So, dajou vu. And you can use this in so many different ways. You can combine it with the word I've used previously, where uh, I've said, smimasen, which is like, excuse me. So you can say, excuse me, is this okay? And you can say, smimasen, dajou vu. And someone will be like, oh, hi, hi, dajou vu. And so you're in great shape for a little conversation with dajou vu. Um, so there's that. And then, as always, I'm going to recommend a song that I will put down in the description as well, now that i figured out how to do that. Hallelujah. And the song this time is going to be a departure from what I've been doing traditionally is like bands and stuff, but I'm studying Japanese here, and so I spend a little bit of time just listening to music that allows me to concentrate and get pumped up while I'm studying. And so I just recently heard this fantastic song from the Inception movie, which is Time by Hans Zimmer. 
So if you want to get pumped up, whether it's a workout, whether it's you're studying, whether you just want to stand on the edge of a cliff and look out and kind of like pan your vision in slow-mo and feel really, really important, this is a fantastic song. Uh, so that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tripping with Dave, as I like to say. And uh, I'm sure I'll be back again, world. Ciao for now.